G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a Dynamo tutorial where we're going to cover a pretty handy script that I use quite often. Um, and this is a good alternative to using plugins sometimes, depending on your setup. Um, so we're going to be looking at batch exporting DWGs using Dynamo. So in this case, um, there is a way to actually generate DWG files out of Revit just using the export settings. You can use something like a sheet set, and this will generate individual DWG files. Now the problem is that these files aren't always named the way you might want them to be named. And as well as this, you do have to rely on sheet sets. You can't just easily pick little subsets of drawings that you may want out of a, a more detailed list. However, using Dynamo, we can get around these limitations. Now, I wanna point out there are a lot of tools out there that can do this outside Dynamo. Some are free, some are not. And some are really good at doing it, some are okay at doing it. But in this case, I wanna show you how you can build your own tool, which will give you more control and customization over how this process works. So we're gonna be using a couple of custom packages here today. I will be using the data shapes package in order to construct a user interface before we export our DWGs. About half of this workflow will just be building a user interface using data shapes. The second uh, package you'll need is called Genius Loci. Now this package has been developing quite a lot lately. Its package author is quite dedicated. Um, I do recommend checking out this package. It has a lot of really useful nodes in it. And the best part is they're all exposed. So you can check out the Python script behind them. Um, so you will need this in order to actually do the final DWG export. So most of this script will be about processing our data before we finally send it to this final node. So I'm gonna be using Dynamo 2.3 and Revit 2020.2.2. So depending on the build of Revit you have or the builds of packages they support, you may get slightly different node behavior, but it should hopefully be fairly consistent if it's a version in 2020 or above. So without further ado, let's jump in and start building. Um, so I'm just using a Revit project with um, some sheets and on these sheets, uh, there are some revisions. So in this case, all of these sheets in my project do have a revision applied, um, just called revision description date month year. And you may wanna add one or two extra revisions to your project, just to simulate if you did have multiple revisions to pick from. Um, it doesn't really matter in this case, because we're not gonna build it to be based off the revision we pick actually. But one way you could build the script is by filtering based on a revision applied to a whole set of sheets instead. We're actually just gonna do it based on nominating some sheets uh, ourselves in an interface. So not actually that important, Never mind. Anyway, I'm gonna jump into Dynamo and I'm gonna make sure I start off in manual mode so that my script doesn't always run because we're gonna be building a user interface. We're not gonna want this thing to keep regenerating over and over again. We're just gonna want it to pop up when we choose for it to. So we're gonna be starting by using data shapes to build a user interface, which is gonna contain a place where you can nominate a path to a directory to export to and then also pick from a list of sheets which ones you wish to export. So in this case, I'm gonna begin with a category by name node, just so we can nominate the category of sheets. I'm just gonna make a code block by double clicking and I'm gonna call this sheets. I'm then gonna collect all elements of that category. So I'm gonna look for all elements of category. And at this point, we should have all the sheets in our project, including some that we may potentially not want to print. Um, of course. So we're gonna be getting a sheet number and sheet name at this point. So you will need to find the sheet number node, which can be a little bit hard to find sometimes. It doesn't seem to always come up when you think it will. There it is, uh, sheet number. And I guess we can do sheet dot sheet name and that should find it, cool. So we're gonna take our number of all our sheets and our name and we're gonna combine these using a little naming rule because what we're gonna do is we're gonna represent our sheets in our user interface using what we call a key. Um, and in this case, we're gonna send through some things in the background, which we're gonna call our values. Our values are gonna be the sheets in Dynamo and our keys are going to be what the user sees when they pick that specific value. So in this case, we're gonna make it human readable. So we're gonna say that SNU for sheet number as a variable plus, and I'm gonna do apostrophe colon space. So we're gonna separate these with a colon and a space plus S and A for sheet name. You can call those variables whatever you want. At this point, we should have a list of the numbers and names of the sheets 
in an easy to read uh, set of, 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 of strings. Okay, so at this point we can turn these into a list view, which is gonna be part of our user interface. So I'm just gonna look for list view. And you're going to be wanting to look for this data shapes node. So at, th at this point, we have keys and values. So our keys are going to be this that we've just created. And our values will be all of the sheets. Noting that the sheets and the values are sitting at the same positions in their lists because they generated those keys. I'm just going to create an input name. And I'm just going to use uh, all caps and say select sheets. I'm going to make my height uh, 300. So it's not too tall. So the input name, select sheets, and the height, 300. You don't have to select the height, I just find it's better to have some size and control on the interface. Now we don't want to show ID, so we are going to say false, because by default, show ID is true, but I don't usually like that. And at that point, we can take this beginning of our script and just right click and group it. And we can say, collect sheets for user interface or UI. We also need to collect a directory path. Now, in this case, we don't need to get a directory. We just need to build the user interface. So in this case, I'm just going to look for directory path. Oh, spelling is important. And we're looking for that little data shapes thing. Now, we just need an input name and a button text. Now, you could set a default path if you're always exporting to a common location. In my case, I'm just going to keep it uh, like this. And make sure you pick directory path, not file path. So we're going to call this button export to, and for the button text, we're going to say set path here. So that by default, it says set path here. So the user's prompted to fill this in. I'm going to group this and just call this um, select directory for UI or user interface. So we now have two buttons or sections of our user interface to populate. Now, if you've built a data shapes uh, interface before, you probably know what comes next, but we need to create a list and bring these together in one set of data because we're going to feed this into the actual interface. So at this point, I do need to call on the multiple input form plus plus. So I'm just going to type in plus plus and there we go. So we're going to connect this uh, to our inputs. We're going to populate some data. So we're going to give it a description. I'll just call this bulk export DWG. For the button text or the run button, I'm going to say export. And I need to close that string. Now you can also add a logo as a file path as well here. If you have a company logo that you want to put into your user interface, by default, it will just be the data shapes logo. I'm going to say true for toggle because that lets the user interface essentially run. I'm just going to call my cancel button cancel. And I'm going to say my width and height are 700. I've just experimented with those numbers until I found some that worked well for me. Okay, so toggle, cancel button, max width, and we'll use the same one to generate the height, the width. Sorry, the height and the width. We'll just group these together and I'll just call these uh, build UI. So at this point, we should be able to generate an outcome from our data shapes user interface. If I just save this and run, we should expect to see a UI. And here's our UI that we've just put together. So we can see we've got a directory path and we can pick from all the sheets in our model. So I'm gonna go set path here. I'm just gonna pick a folder on my desktop, um, a DWG export folder. I might just clear it out because I think it has some contents in it from a previous run. So I'm just gonna empty that folder. And in this case, uh, I am gonna to need to also pick some sheets. So I'm just gonna pick all my sheets except for my home sheet. And I'm just gonna run export. And at this point, the outputs will run out of the user inputs uh, output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on those sets of data using some indexes in a code block. I'm going to say that path for the directory is equal to out at index zero because the output is it is in the form of a list of outputs. And we have two outputs. We have our sheets and we have our directory path. I'm then going to say sheets is equal to out at index one. I'm going to connect my user inputs here. And now, assuming we don't change anything, in our UI, it should maintain our selections. And now we can see that we'll get our sheet names at index one. And if I do a watch node to look at our first index, because the code block only ever shows its last row of output, then you can see we have our directory path as well. So we need to do a few things at this point. So we're gonna begin by processing the revision on each of those sheets, because the, the syntax that I wanna use is gonna be a project number, the sheet number, and then a revision in square brackets. But we are going to have to process out the scenario that one of these sheets doesn't actually have a revision. 
So the first thing we need to actually do is just use a get parameter value by name on our sheets. going to take our sheets as a list and we're going to call on the parameter current revision and this should retrieve the number of the revision in relation to either the sheet or the project depending on how your revisioning settings are set up at the moment mine are by project but if it's by sheet you'll still get the relevant number that appears on that sheet so what we're going to do with this is we're going to be replacing some of these by condition now at the moment these are all one let's just go and re-trigger our user interface to run again and I'm going to include the home sheet this time. So I'm going to set my directory path and I'm going to select all sheets. Now my home sheet doesn't have a revision applied to it. So we'll find that the first sheet you can see doesn't have a value, it's empty. So we're going to be verifying this and replacing it with something. So I'm going to use the replace by condition node to do this. I'm going to take my items. I'm going to add a conditional um, in this case, an equals condition. And I'm going to be essentially checking if it equals nothing. So I'm firstly going to replace it with a dash if it's not there. And I'm going to be checking for an empty string. So I'm just going to fill this into the replace by condition. And I'm also just going to populate this here. Now, the way that the, the replace by condition condition works is it uses what's called a predicate which means that what we're seeing here is the function that we're going to check and wherever the input is left blank is basically where each item is being fed through to verify the outcome. So if it's not equal to this, it will just be the item. Otherwise, it will be replaced by this dash. So if I run this, we can see now this value is a dash. So this protects your sheets from having no revision. And this can be whatever convention your company might use. But I'm going to create a group. Usually this is obviously an error too, because you wouldn't want to issue a DWG if it doesn't have a revision. Okay, so we're just going to say process revisions. So we have one part of our sheet number determined. Um, the next part is going to be our project number. Now, usually this is stored in the project number value. Um, in my case, in my project, I store this in manage project information, project number. You can see my project number is BG02. And then I'm adding this onto my title block, um, just using a label. So in my title block, you can see I have in my label, I have a value that is drawing the project number out each time and then adding the sheet number with a suffix of a dash um, added in between them. So we're going to replicate this behavior in Dynamo. So in this case, um, I do need to, to call on the project information first, which is a category. So I'm going to get a category by name uh, whoops, I need a category by name, not a subcategory. And we're going to be calling on project information as a category. Now, there's only one project information element in the whole project, but we do still need to get all elements of category. And the element that we're going to retrieve essentially represents the object that holds our project information. We're going to be using a get parameter value by name, so I'm just going to copy this one from here. And in this case, we're calling on the project number. So I'm going to type in project number as the value that we're interrogating. And this should return our project number. Perfect, which is in the form of a string or text. So I'll group this and I'll just say uh, get project number. And regardless of the project you're in, it will always go and retrieve the project number. So I'm just going to move this down here the last thing we need is we need to get the sheet numbers of the sheets that we actually ended up using from our user interface. So I'm going to get a sheet.sheet .sheet number node, connect it back to our sheets. And now we have three things, but we need to join them together. So we have our project number, we have a list of sheet numbers, and we also have a list of revisions. We're going to combine these using some naming rules. So I'm going to build a code block. I'm going to start by saying sheet number is equal to, and I'm going to do a dash because I'm going to add the project number on after using the variable sheet n. But I'm going to say plus the sheets number as sn plus, and I'm going to do apostrophe space square bracket to open the square bracket for the revision, close the string, 
I'm going to say plus r, and r is the revision, plus, and I'm just going to add a string of the square bracket on the end. So we have two variables at this point, sheet number and revision. So if I run this, at this point, you can see we've built the back end of our sheet number. Now we need to add our project number to the front. So in this case, I'm going to take my variable of sheet number and I'm going to say uh, PRJN, I'm going to define a variable project number. In this case, you need to do a triangular bracket, one L, to indicate that we want to lace the project number at a longest lacing when we add it, which means we're going to add this to every single sheet number. Otherwise, you'd only get it added to the first item. We're going to add this to sheet N, triangle bracket, one L, and now we get a new variable, project number. If I run this, we now have our combined sheet number to name our documents as. So the last thing we need to do is actually export DWG in document. So we're going to just do export DWG in document from Genius Loci. Now we need a few inputs here. We have most of them already. So we have our directory path back here. We are currently using the active document, so you don't need to specify this variable. Now we have our views, which are our sheets, because sheets can be treated as views in Dynamo. We then have our file names from that second row. You can define export setups using this package. It's a little bit complicated, so I wouldn't worry about it just at the moment. But if you do want to explore it, go for it. Um, you can also specify whether you're using shared or internal coordinates using a Boolean, whether you're merging views, and whether you want to run this process. Now we, we, we essentially do want to use shared coordinates, which is by default true. We do want to merge views and we also want to run it. So what I'm going to do just to be safe is I'm going to say true for all of those, just in case the node changes in future. Now merge views is essentially that box where it says export uh, separate links as xrefs. We don't want to do that. We want to merge it all into just a single DWG file. Perfect. So at that point, um, our script is complete. So let's just close it, reopen it and try it running our script. And what I might do is just have this ready um, to run on the side. This is my export folder. I may even try and make some room for it. I might be able to run these together, maybe not. Okay, we can't, that's okay. I'll run my demo script. So we should get a user interface. We're gonna specify our directory. And then we're gonna select some sheets to export. Now I might just do a handful in this case. I'll just do the first, however many. I'll just, I'll just do the first, um, I don't know how many that is, about eight or nine. So let's just run export and hopefully you should see some activity down here ideally, which means it's exporting the views. And you can see it's sort of compressing all the files like the hatch patterns like it usually does, but off it goes. And all the drawings have the right name that you want them to be. Um, so it's a really convenient way to export DWG files and can form a very customized selection. Um, you can see that obviously it still has to export the images because it has to treat those as XREFs regardless. And it does generate the PCP files, but you can just delete those if you want. And there we go. We've done a, a DWG export very quickly and very easily. So I feel that helps you um, build a useful Dynamo script that you can use in day-to-day -day work. So thanks for watching today. Um, the script and the presentation will be on GitHub. Um, I try to make videos usually once or two times a week. I don't make as many Dynamo videos these days, but you'll find a lot of other Dynamo videos on my channel from back in the day. And uh, I am working on a course at the moment for Dynamo as well. So keep an eye on that. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.